All right, so today I want to talk a little bit about parliamentarism. Now, parliamentarism is one kind of democracy. There's many kinds of democracy, but one way of categorizing democracies uh, has to do with how the executive branch and the legislative branch relate to one another. Now, as most of you know, uh, democracies often share a separation of powers. The legislative branch makes the law, the executive branch enforces the law, and the judiciary branch interprets the law and sometimes decides on constitutional matters. In parliamentarism, and this is somewhat counterintuitive, the executive dominates. Right? It's a system characterized by executive dominance over the legislature. Uh, in parliamentary system, the chief executive, usually called a prime minister or a chancellor, is going to be chosen by the legislature. Now, you might think to yourself, wait a minute, if the prime minister is chosen by the legislature, then doesn't the legislature have more power? Well, in theory, that's true. But um, the prime minister is usually the leader of the majority party. And so if the party truly has a parliamentary majority, then the prime minister is going to have effective control over how the legislature is going to vote. In other words, the relationship of power is not uh, in the legislature, but the relationship of power is uh, through the party. Right? So the, the, the head of the party will be the head of the legislature, and through party discipline, he's going to end up controlling uh, how the legislature votes, or at least how his, uh, how his party is going to vote. Now, uh, the executive is going to be dominant in a parliamentary system when the prime minister has an outright parliamentary majority. Right? So, uh, if the pr prime minister doesn't have a complete majority, then of course you don't have an executive dominance. Um, this is comparatively rare. And the reason that it's comparatively rare is because uh, in a lot of countries, like the United Kingdom or Japan, uh, the electoral rules, the rules about elections, tend to help manufacture parliamentary majorities. What that means is that parties that gain a lot less than 50% of the vote can get more than 50% of the seats quite easily. Right? This is what we call manufacturing a majority. Uh, and the system can be designed to do the, that in different kinds of ways, and we'll talk about that later in class. Um, now, even in the case where uh, even in the case where the prime minister doesn't have an outright majority with his party, uh, the prime minister can still be powerful uh, if he's got a stable coalition party. That is to say, another party that's willing to make a deal uh, in order to get a complete majority in the parliament. Right? This is often the case say, in Germany, where uh, the SPD, which is the Socialist Party, regularly allies with the Green Party, the ecologists, um, and on the other hand, the CDU, or the Protestant Conservatives, ally with the CSU, the Catholic Social Democrats, um, and occasionally they ally as well with the FDP, which is the Liberals. Um, so what happens is if you have a stable coalition partner uh, and a set of deals about how power is going to be exercised, then in practice you can get the votes that you need to pass legislation the way you want to. Now, um, it may be the case that in uh, parliamentarism, occasionally on some issues you don't get a majority because your coalition partner is not going to go along with you. So you don't get everything you want if you're the leading party or if you're the prime minister, but you can often make a deal to get what you want by conceding on some other issue. Now, often the way deals are made is through the formation of cabinets. Now, cabinets, just like in the United States, are the head of the major branches of the executive. Right? So the head uh, the defense minister, right? the, uh, in the UK is the chancellor of the exchequer, but the finance minister, uh, the minister over the environment, that's going to be the minister of social issues or labor issues, there's even a minister of sports in France. Uh, but the idea is that all these different ministries have a head, and that head will be in the cabinet. Now, uh, what will happen is when a deal gets made in a parliamentary system, uh, one of your junior coalition members, right, so let's say, for instance, the Green Party in Germany will um, get a ministry, and it will be usually the Ministry of Ecology. So uh, if the SPD, the Socialists, are willing to concede to the ecologist on uh, ecological issues, they can get the rest of their labor and economic policies through um, from this deal because they will uh, take the lion's share of the so quote unquote important cabinets. But the Greens, because they really care about ecology, really want that ecology ministry. Um, okay, 
Now, in parliamentarism, the executive can be weak when no stable majority coalition can really be manufactured, when it's really hard to make a deal. And this happens uh, sometimes in Italy in particular and in Belgium. In Belgium, a couple of years ago, they had um, something like half the year there wasn't a government. Right? They're, they couldn't form a government. Um, and so negotiations kept going on and on and on, uh, but nobody could form a stable majority, so prime ministers, either they wouldn't be one or they would leave very quickly. Um, okay, but nonetheless, these systems would have a stable well, an executive, a dominant executive, rather, if a stable coalition could be formed, and sometimes they do. Um, now, in parliamentarism, it's worth noting that some parliamentary democracies have presidents. Uh, in Germany and in Italy, for example, which are parliamentary systems, there is an office of the president, but uh, the presidents aren't very strong figures in parliamentary democracies. Uh, they do get directly elected, but they don't have much in the way of power. They have very symbolic sorts of powers. Um, in fact, other parliamentary democracies have constitutional monarchs, like the United Kingdom, or Belgium, or the Netherlands, or Japan, or Sweden. All of these countries are constitutional monarchies, uh, which means they have a king, or a queen, or an emperor, uh, but these are not politically important figures. These are symbolic figures, primarily. Uh, Italy and Germany used to have monarchs, and uh, for a variety of reasons, uh, don't anymore, and so now they have presidents, but these presidents are equally powerless. Okay. Um, and in most of these systems, what happened historically was that the Prime Minister, uh, as spokesman for the Parliament, wrested power away from the monarch. Right? So, uh, the monarch used to have executive power over, for instance, the army uh, and the treasury, and bit by bit, the Prime Minister uh, and the legislature starts chipping away at that power. Okay. Um, so that's the story with parliamentarism. Uh, what you have to remember, uh, is that it's a question of who dominates, the executive or the legislative. And under parliamentarism, the executive dominates.